In this video, I'll show you my top 10 favorite built-in Blender add-ons that I use in my Blender 3D workflow. And these 10 add-ons are built into Blender, meaning that you don't need to download or install anything, you can just enable them in Blender's user preferences. And then at the end of this video, I'll be sharing with you some other Blender add-ons which I use, which are not built into Blender, so you will need to download or install them, but I'll show you a few other add-ons that I like to use at the end of this video. And if you have any other built-in Blender add-ons that you really like to use, which are not in this list, then definitely share it with us all in the comments. So to enable add-ons in Blender, you can just click right here on Edit and then go to the Preferences. Now if you want to enable any of these add-ons to use in your projects, once you click on the check mark to enable the add-on, just make sure to click on the Save Preferences button and that way the add-on will always be enabled in your future Blender projects. So this first add-on is very common and probably most people know of it already, but that is the Node Wrangler add-on. And this add-on is super useful for whenever you're using nodes in Blender. So when the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, you can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes in the shader editor and that is going to preview the node. And so this is super useful when you're creating procedural materials to see what the nodes look like. And this is my procedural scratched metal material. I'll have a link to that tutorial if you'd like to learn how to create this material. Another great feature of the Node Wrangler add-on is that you can select a node and you can press control T and that will add the texture coordinate and mapping. And these are very common nodes that you'll use in the shader editor. It also works in Blender's compositor. So if you control shift and select different nodes, it's going to add this viewer node and it's going to preview whatever node you select. It also works with the geometry nodes as well, but in the geometry nodes, you're gonna hold down the shift and alt key instead, and then you're gonna select the different nodes to preview them. And one more really cool feature about the Node Wrangler add-on is if you wanna add in a group of textures, you can select the principled shader, and then you can press control shift T. Then you can locate to your textures, and I'm gonna select the normal, hold down the control key, and select the roughness and color, and I can click on principled texture setup, and you can see it's automatically going to set up all the textures for us because it detects these key keywords here in the name of the images and it automatically sets up the texture maps and the node wrangler add-on also has some other features like some shortcut keys and some more features so if you'd like to check out my full tutorial on the node wrangler add-on link will be in the description all right the second add-on is the import images as planes add-on this is super useful if you want to import an image into blender so once the add-on's enabled i'll press shift a i'll go down here to image and i can add images as planes then i can just locate to an image that i want to add into blender here's an image from pixel and over here on the side panel, if you press the N key, you can choose between principled, shadeless, or emit. So let's say I want this image to emit light, I can just click on emit. And also if your image has some transparency, you can choose the transparency setting right here. And there's some other settings you can play around with. And then you can click on import images as planes. And if I now go into the rendered view, you can see it is emitting light. And if I go over here to the shader editor, you can see here's the image and it's added the image into the emission. So it is emitting light. And what's really useful about this add-on is it makes the plane the same dimensions as the image. Normally, if you were trying to add an image into Blender, you could press Shift A, you could go here to Mesh and add a plane, and then you could add the same material to that plane. However, the dimensions isn't going to be correct, so this image is actually pretty stretched. So you could go into edit mode and you could just kind of scale this and try to scale it down to the correct size, but by using the images as planes, it's going to be the exact right dimensions as the image. All right, add-on number three is the Modifiers Tools add-on. So this is a really great add-on when you're working with many modifiers. So I have some different objects here and these different objects have multiple modifiers and let's say that I want to apply all the modifiers at once well you can just select the object and then over here on the modifier you can click on the drop down and click on apply or use the shortcut key of control a but that can take a long time if you have many modifiers and many different objects so instead with the modifiers tools add-on just select all the objects and then you can click on apply all and now if I go into edit mode you can see all the modifiers have been applied to geometry also, if you want to hide all the modifiers from the view, again, you can just select all the objects and you can click on the viewport viz. That'll just hide it from the view. You can also delete all. That's a quick way to just delete all the modifiers. And if you have many modifiers on an object and you want to see them better and organize them, you can toggle the stack and make this really small. And then you can click and drag and you can switch the order of the modifiers. So this is a great add-on that can really speed up your workflow and I definitely recommend enabling it. All right, add-on number four is the loop tools add-on this is a great add-on when you're doing 3D modeling. So I have this cube here and I've subdivided it and I wanna turn the vertices into a circle so that I can extrude a circle down into the object. 
So what I'll do is just box select the area that I want to turn into a circle and I'll press the N key to open the side panel. Then I can click on edit and then I can open up the loop tools. Now there's a bunch of different options here. The main one that I use is circle. So I'll just click on circle and you can see it's going to make it a perfect circle. So now if I wanted to like cut through this mesh, I could just like delete the faces and get rid of that circle. So there's a hole there or I could extrude these back in if I wanted to put a circle there inside that cube. There's also a useful option here, which is the bridge. So if I want to fill faces within all these vertices, I can just box select all the vertices and I can click on bridge and you can see it's going to fill those faces. Another useful one is the flatten here. So if you have a bumpy object that you want to flatten, just select whatever parts you want to flatten and click on flatten and it'll just flatten that down. All right, add-on number five is actually two different add-ons. And so if you type in extra on the user preferences, you can add the add mesh and add curve extra objects. So I'll just enable both of these. So when these add-ons are enabled, you can press Shift A and you can go to Curve and Mesh and there's gonna be many different objects that you can add. So you can see there's this really cool rock generator here and this will generate rocks for you. And this is a super useful feature. I use this all the time when I'm creating rocks. You can choose the number of rocks. You can also choose the scale of it. And then when you add in these rocks over here on the modifiers, it's gonna give you some different settings. So I can turn the levels of viewport up if I wanna make these rocks more detailed. And I use these rocks all the time. I use them in my Martian environment tutorial series. I also use them in my Mars Rover artwork, and I also use them in my Rocky River tutorial series. Links to those videos will be in the description. Also, if you go to the add menu and go to mesh, there's many other options here, like there's some different gear objects, and you can change the size of the gear with these settings here. There's also some pipe joints, so there's like an elbow joint and a T joint, and many other pipe objects that you can add. And there's also many other objects that you can add. Here are some of them. So if you press shift A, go to mesh, there's a bunch more objects here. Now the other add-on was the add curve extra objects. So if you press shift A and go to curve, there's a bunch of different curve objects that you can add. You can add some knots here. And one that I find really useful is the curve spiral. And I'm just going to add this first one here. And then I can use these settings here on the side to make it a little bit bigger. I can also turn it up and then I can turn up the height. And then I need to make it longer, so I'll turn up the turn here and just turn this way up. And so this can be really useful if you're creating something like a Christmas tree and you want to have some Christmas lights going around the Christmas tree. And there's many other curve objects that you can add. And some of these curve objects actually come with filled faces. So you can see there's still a curve object because they have the handles that you can move around, but they actually have filled faces. All right, add-on number six is the Add Mesh ANT Landscape Add-on. So you can just search for a land in the user preferences and add the landscape add-on. And this is a super useful add-on. It's one of my favorites and I've used it many times when I'm creating environments. So if you press shift A and then go to mesh right down here on the very bottom you can add landscape and it's going to generate a landscape and then over here on the side panel there's many different settings that you can play around with. So you can change the random seed, you can change the size and there's also some really cool presets right up here. So you can choose between some different presets. You can see here is a canyon and there's also some other cool ones like this mounds and there's even a volcano. So that is really Really cool. And I used this add-on in my Rocky Mountain tutorial series and I showed you how to create some Rocky Mountains in Blender. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, I'll have a link in the description. So this is a very useful add-on when you're creating environments in Blender. All right, add-on number seven is the Bolt Factory add-on. So you can search for Bolt in the user preferences and add the Bolt Factory add-on. And this add-on will allow you to create many different nuts and bolts. And I actually have a video specifically on how to use this add-on. So if you'd like to check out that video, link is in the description. And I also have a free download of these nuts and bolts blender file if you'd like to check that out. So if you press shift A and go here to mesh, you can go right down here and add a bolt. And then when you add a bolt before clicking away or before moving it around, you can choose between some different settings right here. So you can choose between either using a bolt or a nut. So you can use a nut if you'd like to. I'm going to switch it back to a bolt. And you can also change the bit type. So there's some different tops here like the Allen one and there's also the Phillips. And then there's also many different settings to choose from like the height and the depth of the bolt. So I can make the bolt longer if I want to, and also I can make there be more threads or less threads. So this is a very useful add-on for creating detailed nuts and bolts. And again, if you'd like to check out my other video going into more detail, I'll have the link in the description. All right, add-on number eight is the Rigging Rigify add-on. So in the user preferences, just search for rigging, and you can add the Rigify add-on. And so when this add-on is enabled, you can press Shift A, and you can go down here to Armature, and there's gonna be some different Armature presets, like these different 
different animals here and also these different humans. So this could be very useful if you're rigging a human or an animal and you want a rig that you can start with. However, I actually don't do very much character rigging or character animation in Blender, but what I love about this add-on is the human bone rig. And I find this add-on really useful when you're trying to keep the scale correct in a large scene. So this is a kitchen scene that I made with my kitchen assets, and this is a part of my furniture and home asset pack for Blender. You can check out that product with the link in the description. But if I'm ever creating large scenes, I want to make sure that I get the scale correct across the entire scene. So I can press Shift A, go down here to Armature, and I'll just add the human meta rig, and I can move the bones around the scene, and I can also duplicate them, and I can make sure all the assets are the correct size, because I'm comparing all the assets to these human characters. I also use these human bone rigs to make sure I was getting the size correct when I was creating my Martian Rover artwork in Blender. And if you'd like to check out that creation process video on how I created the Mars Rover, link to that will be in the description. But I wanted to make sure the cockpit size was the correct size relative to the rest of the Mars rover like the airlock in the back and also the little patio kind of on the back of the rover where the airlock is and so i was able to duplicate the rigs around and make sure i was getting the size correct for the mars rover all right add-on number nine is the sapling tree generator so here in the user preferences if you type in tree or sapling you can enable the add curve sapling tree generator so once this is enabled you can press shift a you can go to curve and then right down here on the very bottom you can add this tree and then right next to me you can click on the arrow there to open up the sapling tree settings and there's a bunch of different settings you can change so one really cool setting is the tree presets so right down here in the corner if you click on load presets there's a bunch of different trees you can change so you can change it to a willow tree there's also this Japanese maple and also a white birch tree and a large Douglas fir tree and many other tree presets that you can check out and then once you've chosen a preset which is close to the tree that you want to make you have many different settings so I can like change the size of the branches and then I can also click here on the settings and there's many different categories of settings so I'm on geometry but I can hop down to the branch radius and then I can make the branches thicker if I wanted to there's also the branch splitting so I can add more layers of branches so I can like turn up the levels here and I can make many layers of branches and those branches are actually a little bit thick so I think I'll go back to the branch radius and make that a little bit thinner and there's also some other settings and one that I really like is the leaves so you can actually choose leaves so I'll just click here on show leaves and depending on how many branches you have and how dense your tree is it might take a moment for the show leaves to load up now you can see these are actually not leaves these are needles but I can click here on the settings and I'm actually going to go back to geometry and then on the load presets here I'll just choose the small maple instead and then on the geometry I'll go back to leaves and I'm just going to show leaves and now you can see it's added leaves to the tree and I can also turn up the amount of leaves if I want to and if I've modeled a leaf object and I want to put that on the tree I can click here on the objects and I could choose an object and add that as the leaves. So the add sapling generator is a great add-on for creating trees in Blender. And I actually used this add-on a few years back to create this Christmas tree tutorial. And if you'd like to check out that tutorial and learn how I created this Christmas tree, you can find that in the description. And add-on number 10 is the add camera rigs. So just search for camera here in the user preferences and check mark the add camera rigs. So this is a very useful add-on for animating your camera. And it's an add-on that I just learned about fairly recently. So I recently made a tutorial on it. So if you'd like to check out that video, link will be in the description. But if you press shift A and go down here to camera you can add the dolly camera rig and so this camera rig will control your camera and if I press control tab with the rig selected that is going to take me into pose mode and I can select this bone and move it around this will move around the camera then I can select this bone here and move this around and this will move where the camera is focusing on and then this bone here this will move around the entire rig so it's a really useful add-on when you're animating the camera and creating a 3d animation so that is my list of my top 10 favorite built-in add-ons for blender now right at the end of this video I will show you a few other add-ons that I use which are not built into Blender but they're add-ons which I really like using. So the first one is the Atomic Data Manager and I'll have a link to the website if you'd like to download the Atomic Data Manager. But this add-on is super useful I use it almost every day and I use this add-on when I'm cleaning up my Blender files before selling a product. 
product. So for an example, let's say I'm selling one of my procedural material packs and I want to make sure I get rid of any data in the Blender file that it's not actually using. Well, if I click here on the drop down, let's say I'm just selling these three materials. Here on the drop down, you can see there's the copper one and the cracked ice and the asphalt, but there's also a few other materials here which I don't want in the Blender files data. Well, this is where the Atomic Data Manager comes in. So once you download and enable the Atomic Data Manager, you can click here on the scene properties and open up the add-on. And then you can choose how you want to clean up the blend file. So they do have this nuke option here. So for instance, if I wanted to delete all the materials from the Blender files data, I could click materials, then I could click on nuke, and then I could delete all of those materials from the file. Or I could instead just clean the file. So I'll click here on materials, or I can actually click on select all, and it'll select all of the different types of data. So the collections, the images, the materials, and all the other data. And then I could click on clean, and it's going to show me all the data which the Blender file isn't actually using, but it's still in the Blender file. So there's these two extra materials here. So I'll click on OK, it'll clean it up and delete those extra materials, and now if I click on the drop down, I just have the materials which I want to actually sell in the product files. So this is a super useful add-on for me, especially because I sell 3D products. And these last three add-ons are paid add-ons, but I definitely recommend them and they are very high quality. And I have affiliate links to all of these three add-ons in the description, so if you're interested in purchasing any of these add-ons, if you purchase them through my affiliate link, then I will earn a small commission, and that's a great way to help support me and this channel. So the first add-on is the Physical Starlight and Atmosphere. This is a really great Blender add-on for getting realistic lighting in your scene. And when you add in the Physical Starlight and Atmosphere add-on, it'll give you a sunlight and you can move the sunlight around and it'll actually rotate the time of day. And there's different cloud settings and star settings and many different sky settings. And I've created a dedicated review video on that add-on, so if you'd like to check that out, the link will be in the description and also the affiliate links will be in the description. Now another really great add-on for adding realistic skies and sky backgrounds is the Pro Atmo Blender add-on. This is another paid add-on, but it's a really great add-on for lighting your scenes and getting realistic sky backgrounds. And what I really love about the Pro Atmo add-on is that it has so many different customizable settings. It also has some different presets like some sky presets and nebula presets. And speaking of nebulas, you can also create space backgrounds with the Pro Atmo add-on. So there's some settings that you can choose which will actually turn off the sky and then you can turn on some stars. You can also turn on some planets and turn on some nebula and create some cool deep space backgrounds. And I do have a dedicated review video on this add-on so link will be in the description if if you'd like to check that out. And then the last paid add-on which I wanted to recommend is the Quick Baker Blender add-on. So this is an amazing add-on if you're doing texture baking in Blender. It really speeds up the texture baking process and now that I've been using the Quick Baker add-on, I really don't ever want to go back to using the old clunky default tools of baking in Blender because baking in Blender can be quite complex and there's many different little things which can go wrong with the baking process. Like for instance, if you have a metallic material, you have to make sure you turn the metallic values down before you bake it and there can be different UV maps and different objects with different materials and it can get very confusing. But the Quick Baker add-on really speeds up the baking process and makes texture baking so much easier. And I also have a dedicated review video showing you how to use the add-on so if you'd like to check that out the link will be in the description and you can also purchase the add-on through my affiliate links and that's a great way to help support me. So this will wrap up the video on my favorite add-ons for Blender. Definitely let me know if you use any of these add-ons and also, if there's any add-ons that you want to let me know about, definitely send that in the comments. But I hope you find these add-ons useful, and thanks for watching.